Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm glad that you are here and interested to learn more about Toolget database. So uh, before we jump straight in, I know more about the Toolget database and all about what it has to offer for you. Uh, I believe there is a wide range and a diverse uh, technique, and I hope this can be a common ground for you to build internal tools or the application that can be helpful for yourself using or leveraging the low-code solution, which is also an open source product, right? So as we jump in, uh, who am I? So I contribute to the developer experience part of it, uh, whatever it takes, uh, whether it's about enhancing the uh, experience or about enabling the product, educating about it. So whatever it consumes as a part of the domain of developer relations. So I generally code, create content, and cultivate communities. So it's all in a you know, broad spectrum. I enjoy doing it. So then, yeah, looking into the specific agenda for us today, so although there is a huge list of it, we'll be wrapping it so quickly and we'll be open for some questions. We ha we'll be looking at Toolset and as an open source product, and then we'll dwell into the database of it because we'll give a quick introduction about what Toolset is because how many of you are aware of Toolset before? Yeah, so we would need some introduction here. <laughs> we'll do it quickly and then we'll see database and why we built it, some prominent features, at the same time, we'll see some of the use cases that are built using Toolset database and what's ahead for it, okay? So how many of you have used internal tools uh, in your organizations, right? Internal tools for some purposes, for doing some operations inside your company, right? So there is a good number of chances. But how about how many of you built internal tools in your company, right? So now you know the pain, <laughs> how much amount of work it takes and also the amount of maintenance that it involves for you to bring it into live and also take care of it further and further, right? So if you're not aware what an internal tool is, here we are, I'm gonna give you a quick examples to run through. So maybe if you have a deployment dashboard for just you know, uh, you know, looking after some of the deployments and some of the, a quick example is also rate limit manager that you want to put some of your customers and see, set some rate limits and adjust them accordingly. So you need a dashboard for doing all of it or else you go live into uh, some of the instances and do it manually, right? So some S3 file explorer or you call it as a S3 file browser, sorry, S3 browser. So some of the simple examples that I want to give you as access manager. So these are some internal tools, just in case if you're not aware. And these are very, you know, developer specific. When you go a little broad and you go a little, you know, uh, high level, there could be HRMS, the HR management system, some sales dashboard, CRMs and inventory management, supply chain tools. All of this also comprise as a, uh, internal tools inside companies, but these are more like a generic thing where you can also see SaaS offerings as well. But when the things goes uh, so unique, where you have unique needs for your own CRM, not every SaaS product would be fitting, right? You would need to bring more customization and also want to address your unique needs where you wanted to have that as a product. So that's where you in an engineer with more efficiency. So that's where, uh, you know, we wanted to look at what Toolget is all about. So a quick answer for it, it's a open source low code platform for building internal tools rapidly. So that is a major uh, thing here. Yeah, so how long do you think, you know, building a dashboard you know, would take, uh, how much amount of time it would, you know, consume for doing some, a simple dashboard like this, this is a sales analytics dashboard. If you go in a traditional approach, you go with, you know, some of this text, Postgres and then JavaScript and you go for React and then you deploy it. So it, it consumes a quite amount of time if you're aware of it, right? But then, you know, right about, right, before even thinking about the time, the amount of things, number of items that are involved into it, you know, comes down drastically when you go some of the solutions like low, you know, Toolset, where you have UI components where you can drag and drop and add these things into the UI. At the same time, there are integrations and data sources that you can connect and start making operations right from the UI to all the sources that are connected back. So uh, that's how the trajectory, what I'm trying to present here. Um, as a tool jet, as a quick introduction for you, okay? So, yeah, so how do you do this? When I say about the components, like the UI thing is can be built with, we have around 56 components here. This includes tables, forms, or, uh, you know, so, uh, the, the whole image that you have seen previously. You'll also look through more, more and more components as I, as I show you more examples. But yeah, and then beyond components, uh, these are for the front end aspect. Now for connecting to the backend services or APIs or any of the services, you need uh, some integrations for databases also, where you can quickly connect putting some credentials and then you have live and start performing queries and you can do everything that you do so from a you know, SQL console or anything. So these database uh, integrations are supported. There are 19 database connections and then these are API integrations where you can quickly connect and then start using it. But uh, with all of this, these are some examples that I want to bring here. 
uh, that what you can build, some admin portal, soundboarding, and you know all of this, right? So this is something that you can actually leverage too late for building it. So now let's look at as a, you know, beyond product, Toolgen is an open source product, right? So it's a project, and uh, the first commit was on uh, March 31st, 2021, so it's uh, almost uh, two years and nine months around-ish. So then uh, it's built with JavaScript and TypeScript, and yes, so we are uh, 29, 24,950-ish, and so we are close to 25k GitHub stargazers, and then we have 3,500 plus community in our Slack. Right after that, so there are, uh, Toolgen is being contributed by, uh, widely from 460 plus contributors, and it's going to be increased because the Hacktoberfest is coming to an end. So yeah, so it's a quick, uh, just giving a quick overview of what Toolgen as an open source project. And yes, it's uh, uh, under the license AGPL. So yeah, coming, coming, uh, uh, coming to the aspect of uh, the agenda, main key agenda for us today is the Toolgen database. So in Jan 2023, uh, where we announced Toolgen uh, 2.0, so the version 2, where it, it uh, Toolgen uh, comes with an inbuilt database. So, so far what you have seen, like Toolgen is a platform there where you can bring things and build your UI and then connect to data sources. But then why don't you, ha why don't you have an in inbuilt uh, database that you can directly pull in and start working and build your apps right away. So that's the whole view of uh, introducing Toolgen database. Uh, it's built on top of Postgres and then allowing developers to build quickly things uh, and also scale at the same time. So you would not need to write any single line of code when you have to, when you need to configure it. Just like the way you put things uh, in most of the softwares for putting your data in, it's as simple as that. So we'll look into a demo as we jump in. Uh, yeah, so, but why we built it, the core of it is always, uh, you know, simplified setup, where you would not need, in order for you to build a tool jet app, which has a dependency of storing some information, you would essentially need to go back to some of the integrations or databases and then connect and come, right? But with the help of the Toolgen database as a service with an inside, we would not go back again, right? You just be inside and put it up, and that will be super quick. So you reduce, also moving on, it's a reduced maintenance overall and the performance. Yeah, these are all going on. <laughs> of course, it all comes in handy. And then unified support where you have issues, you would not need to you know, jump into different tools again. You are in, inside one place and you are doing. And moreover, you don't need to bring your own database anymore, right? So yeah. Some of the prominent features uh, before we jump into looking uh, lively about how Toolgen database looks like. Uh, so it also comes with uh, all sort of sorts filters and everything. Uh, you can also do joins. Yes, data can be exported and imported, but just giving you an overview of what level of uh, operations that you can perform right from the UI inside Toolgen. So let's see it in action. Uh, Toolgen database, so I have a quick video recorded so that demo won't go wrong, at least from my end. <laughs> So yeah, uh, right over there, what you see is, uh, is where how you access. So this is where uh, the whole page where you're seeing is once you sign up or you self-host Toolgen, uh, once you get into the home, sc home screen, this is a welcome screen where you have uh, the left sidebar, the databases option in the left side. Once you click on that, you will be taken to the databases page. So you are here. So the left side where you see, these are all the list of tables, okay? So then you can also create a new table quickly as you click on that, you should be able to, you know, get from, you know, uh, it shows a couple of options to put your uh, table name, and it, it asks for you to put your, uh, you know, columns, what are all that you can define generally for databases, right? So, for, I mean, speci specifically for tables. So I'm just giving some sort of a random information there uh, for the columns. And then once you put it up there, this is how you simply qu configure the uh, table. And you can create multiple of this. So right after creating the table, as you create it, by just, uh, why am I delaying there? So once you are created there, the, ta the table is currently empty, right? So now you can uh, add data into it. Either you go manually and you know, choose an option to add rows by just clicking on it, and the same you know, view comes at the right, you know, right side of the window where you can actually populate these things. But yeah, you can bulk upload it where you have CSV and uh, other things that you want to feed data into the tables. So that is possible. Uh, at the same time, once you have uh, added the data into it, so it is quite accessible just like that. At the same time, these are something uh, that are easily accessible inside the application, right? So if I have to show you another database which has more data in it, so these are some simple example where you have lot, a little more data than you know, having it. So we'll see how you use it inside the app now. So this is how you quickly pull up and you know start a database, uh, a table inside it. So now I'm creating a new uh, app here. 
So uh, right now what you have seen is about creating the database for the application. Now let's look at how you, are, how you can build the app and use the database in it, okay? So that's what we are doing it. We have just created a new app, uh, calling it as India Force Demo. And once you, you know, create it, you will be landing inside this, uh, what we call as an application builder. So what you see here is an app builder where the, the whole huge playground is for you to build the UI and then the whole components are at the left, you know, for you it's the right side. So you have all the components there and then the down you have query panel. So from query panel is where we'll be accessing the toolkit database that we have just created, okay? So right after you click add button there, you have the list of options to choose. Out of that, we choose toolkit database. Once you choose that, you can you also have a drop down where you can choose the list of tables that you have created. Right? The one what we have done is India Force uh, with, a, with a single entry and once you have it, you can just choose the operation for it. Similarly as how we have chosen the table, the list of operations are shown. We'll use list rows and once you choose it, you can also put some filters uh, and there are a couple of more options that you can always tinker around with the database and as a service that it offers. And once you click preview, you should be able to find the data, uh, okay. You know, previewing right up there. Okay, so this is how you can quickly, you know, bring data into Toolkit application, right? You have created it and now you're also accessing it. At the same time, there are more operations in it, you know, CR, UD, everything ho ho happens through the operations that are shown there. And now let's see how you actually, you know, bring some more little data, the customer table that, that you have shown, sh that you have seen previously. Let's quickly get that data into Toolkit application and also populate it, populate it into a table, okay? And see how it, how, uh, how quickly it can be done. So uh, right up there, let's, uh, so this is also one of the options that you can write transformations out of the data that is getting and just exploring some of the other features. Now you choose uh, customer stable, which I've seen previously. As you click on that, the same thing, same operation, the list data. Okay, let's preview one more time and see that the data is here. Okay, so this is what we are getting from the database. Also name it something like, uh, this is how you name the query that you have just created. Uh, you can name it as get customers. So now let's put this into front end, which means that we're gonna bring, have a UI component. So we'll use table. So I was searching for table there and then the component is quite visible. You can drag and drop into the canvas. And once you drop it there, it's now you can customize this with all the properties and uh, uh, styles that are shown at the right side. So for putting the data, I'm, I've just removed the dummy data and uh, you know, accessing the data dynamically. So it's, uh, we are using code hinters there by just using double curly braces and just say queries and accessing the actual query of get customers. So I hope it was, I hope it was not too quick. So we access the data of the query. So right now we have created a query which is get customers. And once you use, uh, you access it with, uh, you know, as a queries object and then from right from there you choose get customers as a query that you have just created. And inside that you have dot data, okay? So as you choose that this, uh, the data vanishes uh, and then now you run it, the actual data loads in which is coming from the toolkit database. Okay, so yeah, that, uh, so it is how that quick is, right? It just shows up and puts the data in and presents, okay? So uh, this is, uh, this is pretty much about uh, a very high level overview of what Toolkit uh, database looks like and how you can use it inside. Besides Toolkit database, there is, of course, there's a lot of integrations, but then yes, this is specifically about uh, Toolkit database, okay? So these are some of the apps that are built uh, with Toolkit database. This is a, a customer support admin dashboard where you can, uh, it's completely built with uh, the UI components that you have seen and at the back you have Toolkit database. Again, some of the other things, uh, sales analytics dashboard, the app that I have shown you <laughs> in the beginning which was, you know, uh, contemporarily looking at some of the uh, tech stack and all. So it's, it, this is something built with Toolkit database and lead management system. So yeah, these are specific as a broad, uh, in a very high level, but if you go deeper into developer specific things, those are all something that you can do, yes. So yeah, customer ticketing form, and then, yeah, these are some of the uh, examples, but what's ahead for tools and database right at this point of time? So we also uh, envisioning to actually uh, let the tools and database be accessible across different applications beyond tools as an uh, application. So exposing the connection, uh, connections for the wider accessibility, and then currently there is no SQL uh, querying capability where it, it, it's an upcoming feature that you, where you have this ability to add SQL support and then yes, support of timestamp, it's in the roadmap and then a lot more UI enhancements. So yeah, uh, why especially Tooljet? It's, it's all about the you know, amount of time that you put in and what you come out with it, right? So it's uh, the rapid development, the integrations, 
maintenance and efficiency in engineering. So not only about in terms of engineering efficiency as of a quote thing, but in terms of the the amount of uh, you know efforts that you put in to bring something out of it, right? But yeah, collaborative development between teams and beyond all of that, let the developers focus on the actual product than the actual internal rules. So uh, you can they still need <laughs> need a focus to do this, but the thing is that it's more uh, an enhanced and much more uh, you know reduced amount of efforts that you can put in when you have a low code solution, right? So yeah, upcoming uh, we have a community call coming up in uh, uh, I, I I think it's it's on Monday. Sorry, it's on Tuesday, the 31st. We are uh, it's about we are talking a little more about tools and application development lifecycle. So if you are interested, you can also register. You can scan it. It's bit.ly forward slash tj hyphen oct hyphen cc. So it's a tool jet October community call is what I mean. So yeah, you can uh, quickly register for that. At the same time, you can join us uh, in the Slack community. So you can quickly join at toolj.com forward slash Slack. So yeah, um, I think I'm, I'm pretty uh, clear on it. So if there are any questions, I look forward. Yes. Uh, so as you said earlier, like I think there is a connector for having a different DB, like uh, Mongo or Redis or something like that. But is there any specific reason for choosing Postgres as an inbuilt DB? Because generally, when you think about in terms of developer tools, uh, sometimes it's like a single data crunch, which which is completely like I'll never know what is a schema, like it's coming from a third party API. So is there any specific reason for choosing it as an inbuilt DB option? Uh, for for tool. For Toolget as a low code, no, I mean the Toolget database runs on top of Postgres. So you choose, you ask why Postgres? Yeah, like for inbuilt DB because like I feel like uh, a NoSQL DB would be a better option because like that will cover more intern, more like developer use cases. Okay, so uh, it's going to be you know behind the scenes anyways, in, in my view at least because there could be a, a whole lot of options that I've gone through. Maybe the choice of coming with Postgres can be a lot more about, you know, you, you come with a factor of popularity or at least the familiarity with the people, right? But then choosing out something is depends on to the dev team and, you know, they go with their own consensus going around. But at the end, uh, what I'm trying to bring here is not to worry about, you know, things behind because at the end, you would be only connecting from the Toolj database, right? So, so far it's that level, but in terms of the choice that made for choosing the specific database behind tool, you know, database, it's something that gone o over some consensus that I'm not aware of. Yeah. Any more questions? Yes. You need a mic. Yes. So can I connect my Toolget database to a third-party application like Firebase, Superbase, or Appright? Oh, you want to connect Toolget database to another database? Yeah. So let's say uh, I'm a mobile developer. I have created an application. But now I need an admin dashboard. Mm. So I have to streamline all the data from the Firebase to uh, my admin dashboard, correct? So uh, can I use this low-code platform to just connect it? See, if, you, uh, if the requirement was about you have a database in Firebase, right? The, the Firebase, you have data in it, yeah, yeah. and you want to build a dashboard on it. That's yeah. it, right? So you can uh, simply go forward and use the Firebase thing and connect your Firebase DB in Toolget and start you know, building the dashboard on it. If you need some sort of storage thing, like you want to save certain information out of some analysis that you have done on top of Toolget, you mm -hmm. can save that data in Toolget database. That is something you can save inside Toolget. But uh, simply and more, you know, it's a straightforward approach is connect with uh, Firebase, bring the data, make some analysis and put some dashboards. And yes, if you need something to be uh, stored, you can use the Toolget database. Okay. All right. Are we good? Awesome. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to me. Uh, I look forward. I'll be lying around. So.